What's up guys, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this video, what we're asked to do is to find this limit here, the limit as h approaches zero, four plus h minus f of four, all over h, if the function is this, the absolute value of x minus five minus two. So what I'm gonna start doing is first coming up with expressions for f of four plus h and then f of four. So f of four plus h, if f of x is this here, all we do is plug in that four plus h for this x here. So we'd have the absolute value of four plus h minus five minus two. And then if we simplify this here, we would end up with the absolute value of h minus one minus two. And as of now, we can't simplify that any further. So this right here, is the expression for f of four plus h. So I'm gonna plug that in here, like that. So I'll put this in square brackets. This is f of four plus h. Now we gotta subtract f of four. And this one's a little more simple. We just plug in four for x. So we'd have the absolute value of four minus five minus two. This would be negative one, absolute value negative one is positive one, minus two gives us negative one. So we would have minus negative one there, and this is still gonna be all over h, like that. And so now what we gotta do is just pretty much simplify this here. So we'll have the limit as h approaches zero, we'll have the absolute value of h minus one. This would be negative two, and then this would turn into positive one. Minus negative one is just positive one. Negative two plus one gives us minus one, like that. And then this is gonna be all over h still. And so this here, what we can do is, first off, what we wanna do with this absolute value of h minus one is convert it to a piecewise function. And so as we've shown through the one-sided limit videos, this here can be rewritten as either positive h minus one, if h minus one is greater than zero, let's actually put greater than or equal to zero, or if this expression h minus one is less than zero, if it's negative, then we gotta multiply by negative one, like that. And so to simplify this, we would have h minus one when h is greater than or equal to one, right? If we isolate for this h and that inequality there, or it's going to be if we distribute this negative inside the bracket, negative h plus one when h is less than one, right? Or instead of writing negative h plus one, we could write one minus h like that. So this is equal to that right there. And knowing this here, notice that we're dealing with this function when h is approaching zero. So when h is approaching zero, which one of these is it gonna be? Well, notice that zero is less than one, right? So as h approaches zero, it's gonna fall within that interval right there, right? Because zero is less than one. And so as h approaches zero, basically this function here, we can rewrite as this. It would be the limit as h approaches zero of one minus h minus one, all over h, like that. Okay, and then this here, one minus one, that's just zero, that nets out to zero and you're, uh, you end up with negative h over h, which just gives you negative one because these would cancel out. And so that ends up being the final answer for this question, right? So um, took this absolute value, converted it to a piecewise function, and then subbed in the proper piece for whatever h value we're approaching, we're approaching zero in this case, and zero falls within this interval when h is less than one. So this function would be defined by this expression on that interval. So we plug that in, 
simplified everything and we end up getting negative 1.